before the walk around, I want to just quick hop on here and ask if any of you are interested in this t-shirt. I'm going to throw up a pre-order for like probably three to five days. I'm not quite sure how long I'll run it for. Uh, so go get them if you're interested right away because I'm going to do it just for a short period of time and then I'm going to uh, order these. So if you're interested in these t-shirts, go get one. I think they're pretty sweet. I'm trying to make some t-shirts or merch or something that is a little more minimal. Hardly you can tell that I'm really even part of the branding, uh, but it's kind of cool and it's Forerunner related. So if you'd like one of these, go get them on my website. They will be for sale when this video goes live. And like I said, I'll keep up the pre-sale for just a little while, uh, but it's gonna be a short-term thing. So go grab one if you're interested in one. And with that being said, let's get back to the video. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Zach. Here we're talking about overlanding gear, builds, tech, DIY, all sorts of stuff related to modifying your vehicle. Every year I like to do one of these build walkarounds and this is for 2023. I wanna show you everything I've done to my Forerunner and kind of catch you up to speed on what I've done. So, so this Forerunner is a 2015 Forerunner. I've got about 170,000 miles on it and I've touched a little bit of everything with the vehicle at this point. So I'm really excited to kind of show you all the things that I've done to the vehicle. And uh, yeah, if you haven't seen my past walk arounds, really recommend you do so. And if you like anything like this, you may like my channel content. So really recommend you consider subscribing. Uh, but with that being said, we'll move up to the front of the vehicle and I'll start talking to you about some of the exterior and suspension stuff I've done to the front of the vehicle. All right, so we'll start off up front here. Uh, the biggest thing that kind of changes the front end is this C4 fabrication front bumper. It's their low pro. And recently this uh, spring slash summer, I added the high clearance additions on the side there. Um, if you remembered me doing that Viper cut, I used the templates for the high clearance additions to make that cut. So this wasn't overly complicated to do. Uh, inside of this bumper, I have a Harbor Freight Badlands 12,000 pound synthetic line winch and a 30 inch light bar from Diode Dynamics. Doing this install was a little bit cumbersome because the tabs on the inside of the Low Pro don't exactly fit the 30 inch light bar. But with a little bit of adapter brackets, I was able to do so with just some scrap aluminum. All of this is powder coated. I did originally actually just use self etching primer and spray paint and it seemed to work just as good. I just like the look of this being powder coated. As for the lights up front, I have Alpharex Nova uh, Gen 2 headlights with the amber DRL running. Uh, you can pick white as well. There's a little pin switch to switch between them. I've also got some three marker lights here, which are uh, kind of a dual purpose. They have a backlight of orange, but then a spot function of white. So these are three SSC ones from Diode Dynamics. I think it's pretty cool. I've got a video on this. I called it like my functional Raptor lights. Uh, I think it looks cool. Add some functionality, some visibility, and you can sort of use them like a light bar if you want to. Underneath, which is kind of the front, but kind of the underbelly, I have a full skid package from C4. These are, I think, 3 16 inch steel. I've got the front, the middle, or the front, the transfer case skid, the gas tank skid, and I've got a rear diff skid. So the whole underbelly is basically covered in a skid plate. All right, well, I think that's the front. Let's kind of move to the side and then we'll eventually move to the back. All right, so now to kind of talk about the wheels, tires, suspension, all that sort of stuff. Uh, quick before I get into that though, I do have rock lights. I forgot to mention them up front, uh, but I've got eight rock lights from Diode Dynamics. They're white ones and I really like the feature for camping at night but I'm running 35 by 12 and a half by 17 inch Baja Boss AT tires. I'm a real big fan of these. I think they're the perfect balance between snow performance and off-road performance and dirt, mud, sand, those sorts of things. They are beadlock mounted on Relation Race Wheels RR6-Hs. These are a negative 25 millimeter offset and no spacers, and I really like them. Um, as for the suspension, it's a three and a half inch Dobinson MRR lift from Dobinson. Nothing overly fancy, just their Dobinson MRR lift. I've got aftermarket upper control arms from Dobinson as well. It's their billet upper control arms. They have camber adjustment and a little bit of caster adjustment in them. And they're perfect, super easy, and uh, they have a sealed ball joint, so they're super low maintenance. Only other thing up front is the differentials are all re-geared to 488s. And this just allows for running bigger tires and not putting as much strain on the engine, kind of getting some of that torque back that comes in the OEM engine. 
even though with Toyotas, there's really not a whole lot there, but it helps to bring a little bit of that back. Uh, the only other thing that I'm running right now is a prototype kit uh, fender liner modification from C4. And this also helps me to run these 35s a little bit more. If you want to figure out how to fit 35s, I've got a couple videos on this. Um, it's not overly easy, but it's also totally doable. Uh, you just got to do a number of small modifications. All right. Uh, the only other thing probably in the front is uh, I have uh, extended brake lines. I have Timbrin front bump stops. Uh, I've got a breather hose system that goes to the front and the rear from ARB. Um, and that's about it, um, I think, for the front suspension. All right, let's move to the back and I'll talk about the rear suspension stuff. All right, then for the rear here, I've got C4 rock sliders on the sides of the vehicle. Must have performance and a really great modification if you want side steps on a lifted vehicle. The C4 fabrication sliders are awesome too because you get an angled slider with a flat top uh, plate for stepping on. So I really like kind of the benefits of having the angled slider, but also, you know, it being level on top and not just like an angled surface that you might slip on. Uh, in the rear here, same exact tires, obviously. The only difference is I'm running uh, aftermarket upper and lower control arms from Dobinson. The nice part about all of Dobinson stuff is it has uh, rubber bushings where other companies might use Heim joints. So everything is just really low maintenance. Um, the other thing about the rear setup, I think, is I've got Timbrin rear bump stops. I've got the Dr. KDSS uh, Panhard correction bracket. And then I also have the adjustable, but also heavy duty Panhard bar from Dobinson's. Uh, the rear is also re-geared to 488 since you have to do that in the front and the rear. And that should sum up the bulk of the rear end, just extended brake lines as well in the rear. Um, but overall fitting 35s in the rear has been super easy because I have those upper and lower adjustable control arms. I can move the axle front and back uh, super easily, which allows for centering that perfectly within the wheel well. Uh, outside of the rear suspension setup, you can kind of start to see my rear bumper from C4. It's the dual swing out setup. Uh, but here on the side, we've got a chainsaw mount from Mac tie downs holding a Harbor Freight Atlas uh, 80 volt chainsaw. I really like this setup and a lot of people seem to really like it too. I get a lot of questions about it, uh, but it's mounted to one of these window panels from Sherpa and it's a really convenient spot to have this mounted up. So I've been pretty stoked to have this here. All right, so before I open up the rear hatch here, just wanna talk through a couple things on my rear bumper. So this is the high clearance Overland series rear bumper from C4. I've got some built-in lights, which are flush mounted Diodynamics SSC2s. I've got a CMS bracket from Custom Motorsports that mounts my Badlands three-ton off-road jack. I've also kind of set up a little um, license plate light here and obviously got my 35 inch spare. I did a little modification to the spare bracket so it would suck the tire in closer to the swing out because uh, this is a negative 25 offset wheel so it's nice to be able to suck that in a little bit. And then I ran my wire up here for my radio's antenna on the swing out. So that should basically be all of this stuff. Other than that, I've got uh, Morimoto Gen 2 tail lights that I've been testing out and running. And I've got some Diodynamics SSC2 chase lights up there that you might be able to see. Um, we'll talk about the rack in a little bit, but I'm gonna open up the bumper here and show you some of the stuff going on in the trunk. Another little benefit of this bumper is it has this small drop down table, which can be super handy. Uh, and it's really, uh, really heavy duty. It's got braided cable support, so it's, it can support a lot of weight. I think I could sit on it. Um, okay, and then I also have the C4 uh, hatch ladder with these extra steps. And I do use this widow ladder to get up into my uh, rooftop tent right now. So it is handy. It's not just for show. I actually do use it. If we open up the tailgate setup here. All right, so this is kind of my rear modular storage setup. Because this 4Runner is my daily driver, a lot of the stuff on my rig I'll load up for trips and then I'll take off for driving around town, those sorts of things. 
uh, but I've got an Iceco fridge here. This is, I believe, uh, a 48 quart, but I'll put the exact sizing up on the screen. Um, this is a single zone, but really seems to serve my purpose as well. I don't always need a dual zone. I do have their larger dual zone, but it's nice to have the space savings with just a single zone. This is on an ice coast slide. I've got some Tread Pro traction boards here from ARB, or I think they're technically from Tread, but there's some partnership there. Um, and then this is the ice co uh, dual zone fridge slide that actually fits my Rome box perfectly. So this is a 105 liter roam box and it's really slick because um, if I want to run my dual zone fridge or I want to run this case two of these slides will actually fit here side by side so it works out perfectly in that way and I've got a video on this whole setup so you can go check that out if you want uh, this is a little slide out wood table that also acts as a leveling platform for sleeping inside uh, because in the, the only two row uh, for runners, the rear trunk is a little bit lower than the backs of the seats. Other than that, you can probably see I have this window panel and shelf system, and this is made by FinFab. I really like this system. This top shelf holds way more gear than you'd ever suspect. Um, so yeah, this has been really nice for holding a lot of camping gear. And then I've just got a couple of camp chairs up here up top. So I'm going to move this case just to quick show you exactly uh, my kind of rear power setup and then we'll move up to the front and I'll talk you through the roof rack and some of the stuff going on in the engine bay. So I really like the 105 liter cases because you can put them on this slide it fits really nice and then the end you know hinges upward like this so I've got a um, lid organizer I haven't actually used a whole lot but this entire case I use to hold a lot of my food and dry goods and things of that nature so uh, it's really nice because since it's all in this case I can just pop it off the slide and take it inside when I need to all right so you can kind of see here I've got my atlas battery up there for my chainsaw I've got some tools in that Hercules bag but I was actually able to mount a little Garmin right here in this spot where there's typically an inverter in OEM forerunners this rear Garmin setup is super nice and it runs uh, a lot of power that's triggered off of the tail light and the reverse light uh, wiring harness that you can get from Diodynamics. So the bumper lights that I have will trigger the red backlight when I turn on my low beams and will also trigger my license plate light. And then when I back up, it'll trigger the white feature on those lights. So this is a, a nice little setup that I want to build upon more, uh, but I just wanted to show you that I just got this installed and I think it's really clever. So before I show you some of the interior stuff, I just want to show you this desert does it under the seat bracket for my ARB compressor. Really handy for airing up and down. I've got a full faster flight, four tire inflate deflate system hooked up to it and a physical switch right there so I can turn it on and off when I need to. Uh, but that has been a sweet setup that's really allowed me a lot of extra space in my engine bay. All right, so I've done a fair amount of stuff to the interior. I have a center console box, which is a safe. It runs on a key. You've maybe seen that video before, uh, but it's called, I think, Strongbox or Boss Strongbox. Um, in addition to the console upgrade, I have my DeSata head unit. I've got the Rago Fabrication dash mount. I've got this Scan Gauge 3. I did the Teton Workshop shifter knobs. I have this fully custom six rocker switch system that I put in here uh, that I haven't really wired up except for the you know always powered uh, charging cable for my phone. Um, other than that though, I haven't done too much to this kind of engine bay area as far as aesthetics go. Most of these plastics all come black from the factory. So I've liked how that has looked. Um, probably the last thing is the mirror is uh, one of those videoing rear and front facing camera video mirrors, which is really great since the rear bumper kind of gets in the way of my backup camera and just the field of view with my mirror. So that has been really handy as well. Uh, but that's probably everything here within the interior that's of to note. Let's take a look at the engine bay and I'll show you a little bit going on there. All right. so. For starters, um, I, my starter battery is a Group 24F full throttle battery, 
and my auxiliary battery is a group 35 full throttle battery so i have a dual battery setup this battery i've got a bunch of sdhq stuff so this tie down is holding down this battery i've got uh, sdhq battery terminals and i've got a blaze off-road bracket holding my bcdc from red arc which essentially modulates charging between the alternator for the starter battery and the auxiliary battery um, I've also got a single Garmin uh, Blaze Off-Road Kit, which runs most of my lights up front and also syncs super nicely with my rear Garmin as well. So, and all of those can run off of my DeSeta Apple CarPlay head unit, which is really slick. And then over here on this side, I've got a couple different things. I've got a Rago Fabrication washer reservoir, which is a relocation kit, so this space gets opened up. This was the Rago Fabrication surge plate that they sell that I kind of chopped up for my own use. I've got a Safety Hub 150 here running power for a bunch of stuff. I've got some smaller power things like my USB charging port and a power panel on my rear FinFab system that runs direct power off of this. I've also got power to a subwoofer and power to my ARB compressor running off of this. Uh, this is a shunt red arc battery management uh, device that technically is not supposed to be in the engine bay because it's not waterproof i still need to move this or figure out what i'm going to do because i want to use it on my auxiliary battery uh, but still kind of figuring out the next steps for this my auxiliary battery is running a set of it's sdhq battery terminals as well and is mounted up with a c4 dual battery tray i've got a aftermarket I think it's just a K&N reusable cabin filter and air filter. And we've got a breather system here from ARB that I kind of mentioned earlier. So that is sort of this whole setup underneath the engine bay. Let's talk about the rack and that'll be everything. So one modification that a lot of people miss but I do have is this Alpha equipped carbon fiber snorkel. This is the short version because it allows my rack. I don't think it would fit in the long version, uh, but this is carbon fiber snorkel. I really like it. It's super sleek, it doesn't look like a snorkel, uh, and hasn't really had any sort of performance loss so far. So a lot of people thought that there'd be air restriction with this, but it seems to still work just fine. Um, one thing that's been actually crazy is, so uh, I've been testing out this Top Oak rooftop tent. It's a sort of budget-friendly Amazon hard shell rooftop tent and driving up here to northern minnesota i actually was getting around 16 to 17 miles per gallon i was going about 70 the whole way so with like the snorkel you know potential air reduction or a lack of flow and also with the potentially bad airflow because of my rack and the tent and everything uh, things seem to be all right with running re-geared and 35s and everything so and that was calculated with my scan gauge which as far as i can tell is the most accurate way I can figure that out based on using a GPS to set my speed and all those sorts of things. So kind of last but not least, let's talk about my rack system. This is the Crestone roof rack from Sherpa. This is their Peak Series, which is kind of the heavier duty model. I've got a bunch of lights mounted to this. This is a cross-link system from Diode Dynamics. It's the SS5s. Uh, these are a sport driving mode. So they've got this RGB backlight I've set to amber. Uh, but the main output is white. On the sides, I have these Diodynamics rock lights. These are RGB, and they're mounted up to these advanced 3D printing uh, brackets, which I think are pretty sweet. And they are just a low profile way to set up scene lighting on the rack for when you're camping. I already told you a little bit about this rooftop tent, but it's uh, made by this company called Top Oak. It's on Amazon. I think it's a really great option. It's a budget tent, uh, but it has a lot of nice features that you wouldn't necessarily always get on a budget tent. I also really like the length. I think it's like around 86 inches or so. Uh, so it doesn't overhang on the back at all and it stands nicely behind my lights. So overall, it just seems to fit the vehicle perfectly. So probably the last couple things I forgot to mention as I was going through the whole vehicle is I do have these uh, you know, little SS3 ditch lights. These have the amber backlight and the combo light pattern. They're mounted to some Cali raised ditch brackets. And I've got KC wire hiders on my windshield that allow me to route a lot of power up to my roof rack. So 
I think that's kind of everything. Um, probably the last thing that people like to ask me is if my bug deflector is aftermarket, and it's not, it's an OEM one. All right, well, that's gonna be a wrap for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you liked what I did here or wanna see a more in-depth walkthrough on any one particular modification, there's a good chance that I actually made a video on it already and it's posted somewhere else on my channel. So go check that out. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them down below. Maybe I can answer them or at least point you in the right direction. I'll try to link all of this stuff in the description, but I may run out of characters. So we'll see how that goes. All right, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate the support and I'll catch you all in the next video.